Good afternoon Chestnut, it's Miss Liddell again. Here I am for another instalment of the Moomin uh, Adventures, Finn Family Moomin Troll. I hope you enjoy it, we're on chapter four. They are long, but here we go. I wonder what crazy things they'll do today. Chapter four, in which owing to the Hattie Fattener's night attack, the snork maiden loses her hair and in which the most remarkable discovery is made on Lonely Island. In the middle of the night, the snork maiden woke up with an awful feeling. Something had touched her face. She didn't dare to look, but sniffed uneasily around her. There was a smell of burning, so she pulled the blanket over her head and called tremulously to Moomin Troll. He woke up at once and asked her what was the matter. There's something dangerous in here, came a muffled voice from under the blanket. I can feel it. Moomin Troll stared into the darkness. There was something. Little lights, pale gleaming shapes that pattered to and fro between the sleepers. Moomin Troll was terrified and woke Snufkin. Look, he gasped, ghosts. It's all right, said Snufkin. Those are Hattie Fatteners. The thundery weather has electrified them. That's why they shine so. Keep quite still, otherwise you might get an electric shock. The Hattie Fatteners seemed to be looking for something. They poked about in all the hampers and the burning smell became stronger. And then suddenly they all collected in the corner where the Hamulan was sleeping. Do you think they're after him? Asked Moomin Troll anxiously. They're probably only looking for the barometer, said Snufkin. I warned him not to take it. Now they found it. The Hattie Fatteners were all clinging to the barometer and had clambered up to the Hamulan so as to reach it better. The smell of burning was very strong now. Sniff woke up and began to whimper and at the same time there was a piercing scream. A Hattie Fattener had trodden on the Hamulan's nose. In a moment everybody was awake and on their feet. Pandemonium broke loose. Hattie Fatteners were trodden on. Sniff got an electric shock. The Hamulan rushed about screaming with terror and then entangled himself in the sail so that the whole tent collapsed on top of them. It was quite frightful. Sniff maintained afterwards that it was at least an hour before they had found their way out of the sail. Perhaps he exaggerated a bit. But by the time they had all sorted themselves out, the Hattie Fatteners had disappeared into the wood with the barometer, and nobody had the least desire to follow them. The Hamulan, moaning pitilessly, thrust his nose into the sand. This has gone far too far, he said. Why can't poor innocent botanists live their lives in peace and quiet? Life is not peaceful, said Snufkin contentedly. Look, children, said Moomin Papa, it has cleared up. Soon it'll begin to get light. Moomin Mama shivered and clutched her handbag tight as she looked out over the stormy night sea. Shall we build a new house and try to sleep again, she asked. That won't be any use, said Moomin Troll. We'll wrap ourselves up in the blankets and wait till the sun gets up. So they sat in a row on the beach, very close to one another, and Sniff sat in the middle because he thought it was safest. The night was nearly over now and the storm was far away, but the breakers still thundered in over the sand. The sky began to grow pale in the east and it was very cold. Then in the first light of dawn, they saw the Hattie Fatteners setting off from the island. Boatloads of them glided away like shadows from behind the point and steered out to sea. The Hamulan breathed a sigh of relief. Oh, I hope I never see a Hattie Fattener again, he said. They're probably looking for a new island for themselves, said Snufkin enviously. A secret island that nobody will ever find. And he followed the little boats with longing eyes. The snork maiden was sleeping with her head in Moomin Troll's lap when the first golden streak showed on the eastern horizon. A few little puffs of cloud that the storm had forgotten turned a soft shell pink and then the sun lifted his shining head over the sea. Moomin Troll bent down to wake the snork maiden up and then he noticed a terrible thing. Her beautiful fluffy fringe was burnt right off. It must have happened when the Hattie Fatteners brushed against her. What would she say? How could he comfort her? It was a catastrophe. The snork maiden opened her eyes and smiled. Do you know, said Moomin Troll hastily, it's most extraordinary. But as time goes on, I'm beginning to prefer girls without hair. Really, she said with a look of surprise. Why is that? Hair looks so untidy, replied Moomin Troll. The snork made it immediately lifted her paw to pat her hair. But alas, all she got hold of was a little burnt tuft, which she stared at in horror. 
You've gone bald. Or bald, said Sniff. Sorry. It suits you really, Moomin Troll said consolingly. Please don't cry. But the snork maiden threw herself down on the sand and wept bitterly over the loss of her crowning glory. They all crowded round, trying to cheer her up, but in vain. Listen, said the Hamulin. I was born bald on top, and really I get along very well. We'll rub your head with oil so that it's sure to grow again, said Moomin Papa. And then it will be so curly, added Moomin Mama. Will it really? Soothe, uh, sobbed the snork maiden. Of course it will, soothed Moomin Mama. Think how sweet you'll look with curly hair. So the snork maiden stopped crying and sat up. Look how lovely it is, said Snuffkin. The island has been washed by the rain and now sparkled in the early morning sunlight. I shall play a morning song, he went on, taking out his mouth organ. So they all sang lustily after him. There's no need to worry or fear or fret. There's plenty of life in all of us yet. The Hattie Fatteners, everyone, have sailed away to the rising sun. And after beauty will never more crave, for the snork maiden's getting a permanent wave. Come on and bathe, cried Moomin Troll, and the whole lot pulled on their swimming suits and rushed out into the breakers, except the Hamulan and Moomin Mama and Papa, who thought it was still too cold. Brr. Glass green and white waves rolled in over the sand. Oh, to be a Moomin and to dance in the waves while the sun gets up. The night was forgotten and a long June day lay before them. They dived like porpoises through the waves and sailed in on the crest towards the beach, where Sniff was playing in the shallow water. Snuffkin was floating on his back far out and looking up into the blue and gold sky. Meanwhile, Moom and Mama was making coffee and looking for the butter jar, which she had hidden from the sun in the damp sand. But she looked in vain. The storm had washed it away. Oh dear, what can I give them for sandwiches, she wailed. Never mind, said Moomin Papa. We'll see if the storm has given us something else instead. After coffee, we'll make a tour of inspection along the beach and see what the sea has washed up. And this they did. On the farther side of the island, shining slippery rocks reared up out of the sea. And there you could find both patches of shell strewn sand. Oh, a tongue twister. The mermaid's private dance floor and secret black chasms into which the breakers thundered as though they were battering on an iron door. In fact, there were caves and gurgling whirlpools and all manner of exciting things to be found. Everyone set out on his own to see what had been washed up. This is the most exciting occupation for you can find the strangest things, and it is often quite difficult and dangerous to save them from the sea. Moomin Mama clambered down to a little patch of sand which was hidden by some fearsome rocks. Here clumps of blue sea pinks grew and the sea oats rattled and whistled as the wind forced its way up their narrow stalks. She lay down in a sheltered spot from which she could see only the blue sky and the sea pinks that waved over her head. I'll rest just a little while, she thought, but soon she was fast asleep in the warm sand. But the snork ran to the top of the highest hill and looked round. He could see from shore to shore and the island seemed to him to float like a giant water lily on the uneasy sea. He saw Sniff, just a speck, looking for wreckage. He even caught sight of Snuffkin's hat, and surely that was the Hamulin digging up a rare shell orchid. And there, wasn't that where the lightning had struck? A terrible crag, bigger than ten Moomin houses, had been split like an apple by the lightning, and the two halves had fallen apart, leaving a deep cleft between them. The snork climbed, trembling into the crack, and looked up at the dark cliff walls, which the lightning had split open. The stone was as black as ebony, but though it ran a bright and shining streak, it was gold. It must be gold. The snork poked about with his penknife. A little grain of gold came loose and fell into his paw. He picked out one piece after another, getting hot with excitement and digging out bigger and bigger pieces. After a time, he had forgotten everything but the brilliant vein of gold, which the lightning had brought to light. He wasn't a beachcomber any longer. He was a gold digger. Meanwhile, Sniff had made a very simple find, but he was just as happy over it. He had found a life belt. It was slightly rotted by sea water, but it fitted in perfectly. Now I can go into the deep water, he thought, and I'm sure I shall soon be able to swim as well as the others. Won't Moomin Troll be surprised? A little farther away, almost amongst the birch bark, floats and seaweed, he discovered a raffia mat, a broken dipper and an old boot without a heel. Wonderful treasures when you steal from the sea. 
Then in the distance he caught sight of Moomintrol, who was standing out in the water struggling with something. Something big. What a pity that I didn't find it first, thought Sniff. What in the world can it be? Now Moomintrol had got his find out of the water and was rolling it in front of him up the beach. Sniff craned his neck and then he saw what it was. A boy. A big, gorgeous boy. Pee-hoo! shouted Moomintrol. What do you think this is? What do you think of this? It's quite nice, said Sniff critically with his head on one side. But what do you think it is? What do you think of this? And he displayed his find on the sand. Sand. The lifeboat is lovely, replied, replied Moomintrol, but what's the use of, a half, of half a dipper? It will probably do if you bail quickly, said Sniff. Listen, what do you say to a swap? The raffia mat, the dipper and the boot for that old boy. Never in your life, said Moomintrol, but perhaps the life belt for this rarey object that must have drifted here from a distant land. And he held up a glass ball and shook it. Then up whirled a mass of snowflakes inside, set, settling gradually to rest on a little house with windows of silver paper. Oh, said Sniff, and a great struggle was going on inside him because he couldn't bear to part with anything, even in exchange. Look, said Moomintrol, and shook the snow up again. I don't know, said Sniff doubtfully. I don't really know which I like best, the lifeboat or your snowstorm. I'm pretty sure it's the only one in the world at the moment, said Moomintrol. But I can't give up the life belt, wailed Sniff. Dear Moomintrol, couldn't we share the snowstorm? Hmm, said Moomintrol. Couldn't I, I, I just hold it sometimes, begged Sniff. On Sundays? Moomintrol thought for a bit and then he said, Well, all right, you can have it on Sundays and Wednesdays. <laughs>